And Merry Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to John McMillan Presbyterian Church for this service of lessons and carols on Christmas Eve. It is good to have you here with us, however you're worshiping with us tonight. There are only a couple of announcements that I have before we enter into our time of worship. One is that for tomorrow on Christmas Day, we will be worshiping together online only. And that also goes for New Year's Day worship. So we will resume in-person worship next on January the 8th. Um, so please don't venture out into the cold in person tomorrow. <laughs> um, so please note that for tomorrow and, and next Sunday. And on that note, um, one of our pipes here in the building has frozen, and so the restrooms right here behind the sound booth are out of order, and we have restrooms down the hall toward the preschool um, directly behind you. Um, if you should need a restroom. And with that, I invite us into our time of Christmas Eve worship, and I invite Carolyn and Emily Bro up to, or, or I guess, it's Betsy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Carolyn. <laughs> you do not have to light the candle in addition to everything else. Betsy and Emily are lighting the candles tonight. Thank you. were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The light has gathered. We celebrate in hope, love, joy, and peace, which are all central characteristics of our Emmanuel, God with us, whose light shines in the Christ candle this Christmas. Please pray with me. God of all light, we come before you in many ways bruised, broken, and cracked apart. 
Thank you for shining your light into these cracks, bringing your healing presence to our deepest need. And may we be reminded that the light of the world is first revealed in the humble simplicity of a little child, Emmanuel, the incarnate, Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. May be seated. I invite you now into a posture of prayer. God, wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace. Son of Mary, truly you have met us up close, exactly where we are, in the newborn baby, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the journey of Advent that has brought us here. Thank you for the waiting in darkness that has resulted in us being in this place at the manger. Thank you for this congregation tonight, gathered in grief, in joy, in every feeling in between that all our lives are imbued with, God. In the shadow of another year that has passed, yet somehow covered in the light that still shines out of Bethlehem all these years later. 
God, thank you for stories of Christ among us this year, of meals provided and stomachs filled, of clothes given and bodies made warm, of forgiveness offered and of relationships mended, of children singing happy birthday Jesus, who's fully human and also fully God. We praise you for the mystery of Christ, for how a king could arrive so small, for how the Holy Family made a way for him into a suffering world. As we revisit the story of Jesus' birth tonight, God, make us like the angels who spread the joy and good news of Emmanuel, God with us. Make us like the shepherds who followed faithfully just as they were. Make us like Mary, who knew she was chosen. Make us like Joseph, stewarding and nurturing this new burst of God among us in the form of a human being. Prepare our hearts and minds tonight to be wrapped not in tidy bows, but in Advent hope and peace and joy and love as we witness to the light of Christ among us, praying the prayer Jesus taught us together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The story begins with our first lesson comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15, and 17 through 19. Listen to and hear the word of the Lord. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, and he will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, you have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you, Bell Choir. Our story continues with the second lesson from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The story continues in Isaiah 11. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf 
shall live with the lamb. The leper shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. story continues in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 35 and verse 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, 
and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Siblings in Christ, especially on this night when we celebrate Christ coming to us in human form, we recognize that the earth and everything in it belongs to God. So with that, I invite you now into this time of returning our tithes and offerings. God, you sent Jesus into the world that we might have abundant life. We thank you for the abundance that you offered us then, now, and will continue to offer to us. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We return to the story from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, 
to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
the story continues in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known, made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, as we gather here, a community of disciples who have gathered to remember the incarnation, the birth of the one who came to save us and to bring us back to you. And so we ask that you touch our hearts and our minds so that we can hear the word the way you would have it heard, so that we can understand the word the way you would have it understood, and so we can live the word the way you would have it lived. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A service of lessons and carols is one of my favorite Chris Christian worship experiences. We tell the story of the relationship between God and God's people, about why there was an incarnation through seven scripture readings and lots and lots of music. The first lesson you heard tonight was from Genesis, and it describes the fall, as we call it, from the grace of Eden. It tells us why we need a savior. You see, in Eden, humanity was given the basics of what was needed to thrive. Life, freedom, food, a place to call home, family, harmony, and a stable natural environment. Most importantly, in Eden, God was near. It was not a place without struggle. It was not a place without anything that would have prevented life to be worth living. Even in Eden, there was loneliness and maybe some temptation. Well, we know about that, don't we? There was anxiety. There were limits. But any troubles that there might have been in Eden were erased by the presence of God. Yet humanity didn't really trust God. And in an attempt to become independent, rejected all that God had given them. They abandoned God. And the natural consequences of this act were that humanity and God became distant, far off. Then, humanity's struggles became 
burdensome, painful. At times, they were impossible to bear. And so humanity needed a reconciler, a savior, someone to ease the pain and reconnect the people to God, to bring God near again. That's Genesis. Our next text comes from Isaiah. A bit of context. It's been a long time since the rebellion in Eden. God had been reaching out over the centuries. God made a covenant with the patriarchs and with Israel. They were to bring the people back. But the patriarchs have come and gone. Moses and the judges have come and gone. David's kingdom has split. The Assyrians are now in the process of completing its destruction. And it's pretty bleak, pretty dark. All because humanity kept God at a distance. But along comes Isaiah. And Isaiah proclaims that there will be a time when the darkness will turn to light. Depression and death will be replaced by joy and light. Conflict will end and there will be peace. And the sign for all this will be the birth of a son. A royal son. A son who will save God's people. A king who will bring people back to God. A king who is wise, mighty, eternal, and who will bring peace, justice, and righteousness. And all this will not just be for humanity. It will be for all creation. That was some pretty good news for the folks who were listening to Isaiah. This is going to be the Messiah. It's what the people want and what they have been waiting for. Which brings us to Luke. It was a long wait. A very long wait. And then Gabriel, a messenger from God, comes to a young woman from Nazareth named Mary. She is told she will give birth to this king, anticipated by Isaiah. He will be great. He will have the throne of David forever. He will be the son of God the long-awaited Messiah, the one who will reconcile God and humanity. Mary gives birth to her son, Jesus, God's son, in Bethlehem. The announcement of the birth is to the lowly shepherds who come to see this great sight. Could this be the one that Isaiah proclaimed? This child born in a stable and placed in a feed box? Is this the God come near? That is why we turn to John in the end. Get some clarification. Because, see, John doesn't have a birth story in his gospel. He doesn't have a description of the birth of Jesus. He has an explanation of the birth of of Jesus. And his explanation is remarkably similar to what we hear from Isaiah. Listen to John 1, 1 through 5 and 12 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. To all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The people who walk in darkness can see a great light, a light that shines on them and be reconciled to God. That's this baby. 
God, come near. Just like before in the garden. And it, it is this event that helps us through our struggles and makes them bearable. This is why so many people come to church on Christmas Eve. We all want to experience that. God came here, the presence of light in a dark world. And it does certainly appear dark at times, doesn't it? Creation itself seems unstable. The races, cultures, nations, and religions rage. Our nation is polarized, angry, anxious. Humanity fights over land, wealth, and power. And then there are personal struggles and anxieties. Food, shelter, security, family, community, the future. Which is why so many of us are here tonight. We are here looking for some comfort, some light, some joy. And it is this child, born of Mary, that offers all of those things. Because it is this child who will lead us out of this present darkness and into the light of the kingdom of God and God's salvation. And so we come here and we listen. And we hear the words of the child. I am the light. I am the way out of the darkness to where you will be near God, to where you will have peace, to where you will find sanctuary, to where I will help you bear the struggles and troubles. I have come to take you there. But we still have a question. Why would you do such a thing? His answer, because I love you. Because I love you. I always have. Since you left me, I have been calling you back. And now I have come to you in person. I have come to you so you can return to Eden. So, let's take a moment. Consider the baby, the light in the darkness, the light of the world, the source of our hope, born to Mary in Bethlehem, in a stable, wrapped in bands of cloth and placed in a manger. God came near. That is the service of lessons and carols, the word of God, and songs of joy. Merry Christmas. Amen.
we come to our last lesson. And what's interesting is it occurred to me while I was meditating on lessons and carols that I actually already read the last lesson. So you get a bonus. One of the questions I think that we want to ask God, we want to ask Jesus is, why? Why were you born in a stable? Why did you teach us so many things? And why did you die for us on the cross? And so our last lesson comes from John again. Chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We get our light from the Christ candle. And we share it with others. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, 
On them the light now shines.
Let the light of Christ shine on you tonight, this week, and forevermore. And that that light scatter all the darkness in your life when you need that light most. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and celebrate the birthday of our Savior. Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you.